This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! discussion type video and this time it is going to be on what can be done on the next ban list in order to basically outright kill the zodiac theme from being a competitively viable option now obviously we're in a really weird limbo type state in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh right now which always exists every year between the North American WCQ and all of the nationals and world championship qualifiers happening and concluding and then the world championship itself we're in that little weird time frame area where there's not really much going on except for a lot of speculation on what to buy speculation on what's going to be good later and speculation on what the next ban list will bring forth now the next ban list essentially has to 100% like kill zoo otherwise we're still going to be playing it for a basically undetermined amount of time like it's very much a deck that's not really hindered that heavily by link summoning and the master rule going into effect that puts the link summoning mechanics into the game. It's not really that heavily hindered by that because the entire focus of how the deck operates is just stacking one Xyz monster on top of another one, literally, which could just be done in your extra monster zone, which we get with master rule four, which implements the link summoning mechanic and restricts the usage of the extra deck for any mechanics that are not link summoning. So, what we have is we have this weird time frame where we're waiting for a ban list, even though we just got a ban list not too long ago, literally a month ago at this point, on June 12th was the last ban list that we got, which that ban list did kind of come out of nowhere and say, hey, we're just making a special format for Nationals, which was weird because if their attempt was to balance the game out, they really did a very poor job of it, because it's almost like they hit every single deck that wasn't Zoo effectively. Basically, like, that grass looked greener was a card that basically was already pre-checked by Ash coming out in a set, and those were really the only decks that could do anything against Zoo, and, like, eh, the only real hit that Zoo maintained was to lose Norden, which made them lose the Fusion Substitute combos, which honestly didn't really matter in the long run, because every other deck lost Norden, but Zoo still kept doing the exact same thing that it had been doing, which was summoning Dryden, Broadbull, and Chalkenine. Really, I don't know who looked at the June 12th list and okayed it and said, yes, this'll be how we kill Zoo. I don't really see how that was the case at all. But anyway, how can we actually kill Zoo? What needs to happen on the next ban list for Zoo to cease existing in the format, in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, so on and so forth? Basically, a few things have to happen. Basically, the best and most powerful cards in the Zoo theme have to be banned. Unfortunately, the way the deck and art type itself was designed is very conducive to just abusing the smallest things because of the way the art type was originally designed of just slapping one monster on top of another. It very easily just bounces back from any hindering hits that, you know, basically come to bite it in the ass. Any one zoo card is a starter card that gets you to all of your Xyz pool, which is definitely not something that makes it easy to deal with this deck in terms of hits and regulations on the Forbidden and Limited list. But anyway, cards that need to go away. <laughs> basically, 100% Dryden and Broadbull need to go away. Now, Broadbull can either go away or Chalkanine can go away. Honestly, it needs to be one of those two, maybe even both, but Dryden is definitely a card that 100% needs to go away because it allows the Zoo theme to literally just go into one card that causes disruption on both players' turns, which gives the theme extra strength and extra capability of playing the longer game, which is what needs to be taken away from the deck in order for it to die. Now, Broadbull needs to go away because Broadbull itself is a card that, while it searches a lot of things that are not Zoo theme, the fact that it is a Zoo monster and it does give you searches for other Zoo monsters is the huge problem here. The fact that Broadbull allows your play to literally pay for itself and be doable next turn because you can search Whiptail, which is a great offensive card, you can search any Zoo name that you want, 
that allows you to normal summon it next turn and then just start stacking on top of it again, it literally lets your combo pay for itself. The existence of Broad Bull in itself lets the combo pay for itself. Now, Broad Bull may not need to be banned necessarily, but Broad Bull or Chakanine, one of the two that allows the play to literally just extend further past what the limits of your one Xyz stack is doing, is definitely the cards that need to be dealt with. Now, arguably Rap here is either fine at two or needs to go to one. Honestly, I'm indifferent on that card personally, because at two it doesn't really seem to do that much, especially if Dryden goes away, because the only real thing that you were doing with Double Rap Pier in this previous format was you were using it with the Dryden in order to pop Ram Ram that was summoned off Chalkanine, which then allowed you to make your other rank four in the form of a Tornado Dragon, Digusto Emerald, or whatever. Uh, Raditz 2 seems to be incredibly okay, especially if Dryden goes away, because then that means those first turn combos aren't possible. And then that just means that all it is is just an extra floating zoo monster on the board. Now, I definitely don't think that Raditz 2 and Chakanine are very healthy existing at the same time. Definitely not with Broad Bull around. All that sort of nonsense, uh, basically. But uh, it basically just... I think Rad is actually fine at 2. I think that card was basically made to be semi-limited. It seems to have very much like a Reborn Tangu and Destiny Hero Malicious type vibe about it. Where like it's just made to exist at 2, and I think it's fine existing at 2 as long as Dryden goes away and as long as either Broad Bull or Chalkanine go away. I actually don't think it's big, that big of a problem staying at 2 because then it allows any zoo theme that gets put in any other deck a little bit extra of a leg to stand on, but it will definitely not be something that blows the pure zoo deck open in proportion of like what it's capable of doing in the you know coming formats, especially with only one extra deck zone being allowed to be done, like basically you you get to summon rat from deck under your Z stack, and then you summon another rat from deck, and then you can't really overlay on top of that rat because you only have the one zone, but it does allow you to make Mrs. Radiant a bit easier. I don't know. I think it makes things a little bit more interesting with rat it too, uh, but I definitely don't think it's the card that's necessarily the problem. I think the problem is the fact that things like Broad Bull, Chalkanine, and Dryden allow your combos to pay for themselves and be disruption and float back monsters from your graveyard. I think those are the problems. So, as as I said, Dryden definitely needs to go. Broad Bull or Chalkanine needs to go. And honestly, I'd be okay with Rat staying it too. Now, Zodiac Barrage, that card 100% needs to go away. That card needs to legitimately cease existing because that card is insane in terms of what you think it is and what you think it does. When you look at it on paper and you look at it, this card is a starter card, but if you already had a starter card, it's an extender. That's really good. Very few cards in Yu-Gi-Oh have that stigma of where it's a starter card or an extender. Usually you have your cards that are really good starter cards, and then you have these cards that aren't starter cards, but are really good extenders. Zodiac Barrage is both of these cards wrapped up into one, and it's definitely not a card that's very healthy when you implement it into a theme that can summon Xyz monsters with one card. Multiple Xyz monsters with one card, so Zodiac Barrage needs to go away. Essentially, the OCG hits that were done to this deck need to happen in the TCG, plus a little bit of a different minor tweak uh, to go around uh, basically the fact that the deck is still seeing a minor amount of play in the OCG, but basically it's being beaten out by other things. Now, if Konami wanted to 100% kill the theme and kill the deck in the most over-the-top way, which usually in the TCG, Konami does end up killing things a lot harder than they ended up getting killed in the OCG, then the next card they should be going after is actually something that a lot of people haven't really been talking about, and it's not something that uh, that seems very obvious at first glance. But Zodiac Whiptail. If you ban Dryden, then all of the offensive and removal capabilities of the theme fall back on Zodiac Whiptail, and that's why Broad Bull was so insane in the OCG. After they put Rat at one, Dryden to zero, and Barrage to zero, the reason the deck still did so well was because at the end of the day you were summoning a 2800 body that had a whip tail under it every single turn because of the existence of Broad Bull and its ability to search whip tail. Let's think about what whip tail does. Whip tail is non-targeting, non-destruction, banishing removal for any single monster in the game. There is such a huge margin of cards 
that are just dealt with by Whiptail's existence that causes the zoo theme to have such a good offensive force going into uh, going into its um, its play string. If you have Broadbull and Whiptail in the same format, now the deck saw some success when the new ban list came out in the OCG that banned Broadbull, and the deck was literally just like still just relying on Whiptail. Like Whiptail is the way the deck deals with threats. It's the way your monsters get really big, it's the way your deck removes monsters from the game and removes threats from the battlefield and the field and all that sort of nonsense. That's the way the deck functions. It's all that happens once Dryden is gone is that all of the offensive capabilities of the deck to remove threats literally just get carried by Whiptail. So if the deck needs to become absolutely deadified, then Whiptail is probably the card that needs to go. Strangely enough, and when you think about it, it makes sense because, like I said, without Whiptail, Whiptail is the only one that allows you to just how many copies you got in hand? Okay, you can put those all under the one monster, it gets big, big, big. Other than that, the only way you get your monsters big is by using Tiger Mortar to re equip other things from Grave while also having one underneath. It requires a lot more actual just play line and play thinking and play structuring rather than just, oh, search the Whiptail, put it under. Then, if that weren't enough, Whiptail allows you to banish like monsters. Even if you do not kill the monster in battle, you can just banish it with Whiptail. That is a huge, huge amount of utility for a card when you're looking at how it can deal offensively in the format. The only other card I can think of that does something like that is El Shadal Construct, and that card's banned. That card destroys monsters when it battles them. Although, albeit one's a boss monster and one's literally just like a monster you search in your deck, but still, like there are conclusions and comparisons that can be drawn in terms of how effectively they deal with threats in the form of monsters in the format because they both just deal with them outside of having to kill them in battle. So there's that. But anyway, those are my thoughts. Those are my thoughts on how Zoo needs to be hit on the ban list in order for it to cease to exist in the game. Dried it to zero, so there's no defensive capability on your opponent's turn. Rack is fine at two, and especially going into link format, it'll allow the deck to try and do something there. Uh, but I think Rat is fine at two, but it could go to one. Barrage needs to go away. 100% Barrage needs to just... No, 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 no. Starter card and extender, both being very good starter card and very good extender, <laughs> shouldn't exist. And then Broadbull or Chalk and I needs to go away, one or the other. I think Broadbull would be fine to leave legal if Whiptail gets banned, and Chalk and I would be the one that would probably need to go. But if Whiptail stays around, then Broadbull needs to be banned. Because Broadbull searches Whiptail, and Whiptail is a pretty big goddamn problem. <laughs> as long as we think about it in that regard. But definitely Whiptail, I think, is a card that could easily just probably be a problem. And be a card that's banned. This card's called, they call this card Axe of Despair. No, 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 no. This card is much, much worse than Axe of Despair. This card is non-targeting, non-destruction, banishment, removal. We need to think about that for a second. And it's the main way that you get your zoo monsters really big in terms of being able to kill things in battle. It's just my opinions on the matter, but you're welcome to your own, and I'd love to hear about them in the comments down below. Whether you think I'm right, wrong, or all that sort of nonsense, then definitely leave an educated comment in the comments down below, and I'd love to read through them and maybe get into a little bit of a debate with you. I don't know. I like doing that sort of things in the comments. I like to, I like to talk to people and let them know why I think they're wrong, and they like to let me know why they think that I'm wrong. It's a conversation. But anyway, as always, guys, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links, as always, are in the description down below to my Facebook fan page as well as my Patreon page if you want to support the channel directly and help some future projects come into fruition and just show your support for something that you like, then you would have my eternal gratitude towards the matter. And it would be a great help to making this channel something a little bit better than it already is. And again, you'd have my eternal gratitude. So definitely check that out. But anyway, as I've already said, thanks for watching. As always, thanks for your time as usual, guys. And take care. I will see you in the next video.